Hello guys, welcome to the reveal for the new hero as well as patch notes, cosmetics, all sorts of stuff. I went ahead and chaptered everything for you guys. That way if there's a certain section you'll have it seen from somebody else or if there's just something specific you want to look at, feel free to skip ahead. You'll see it in the description as well as like on the little timeline down below. But I went ahead and took my reaction from the Twitch channel and made it to a video for you guys. So if y'all want to take a look at it, here's the video. Hope y'all enjoy. Ben, uh, I feel like we should just dive into it. Yeah, let's, let's dive into it. So let's dive. It's a fun part. Uh, Quality's not the greatest, by the way. Let's go with the chains first, right? Sure. Uh, start with the basics. Uh, the chain, if you're familiar with the uh, Shaolin, it's exactly the same. So you're going into light, heavy, light, heavy, heavy, light, heavy, light. As long as you're alternating, uh, you're going to get the chain going as long as you have stamina. So it's the same uh, as Shaolin. I kind of expected this. Enhanced. So you can keep going all the time. Oh, it's all enhanced. And if you press, oh shit! Uh, light twice, for example, you're gonna get into your finisher light. Sure. If you get heavy twice, you're gonna go into your finisher heavy, mm -hmm. and that's the end of your chain. So, those little Shaolin reskin. Um, as you can see, sorry, can you throw a few more lights uh, and heavies just so we can get all the damage values for those uh, yeah. recording along at home? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. Recorded. Um, and uh, yeah, as you can see. Everything is on interruptible stance as soon as you get into the chain. Don't see the damage uh, numbers. The fact that he has uh, this uh, gigantic staff and holding it like really on the end mm -hmm. um, means that he has really imposing arcs. And uh, basically, this is kind of telling you that this is a hero that's going to be comfortable in group fights when he's in staff mode. Uh, let's get through the rest of the so kit. Pretty decent quick. damage. Sure. So you have uh, side dodge heavies, classic. Uh, dodge those pesky black. It's like a Hito Kiri dodge and, attack, uh, except bashes. Dodge normal side. heavy, which, uh, if I can show it off here, does what it should do, which is close the gap, prevent someone from rolling out, uh, initiate combat, etc. Et uh, we have the zone, which, as you can see, has very short forward range, but that's on purpose because usually you want to kind of target the guy in front of you and hit the guy that's behind you. If it would go forward a lot, mm -hmm. you would miss those external hits. So that would feel a lot worse than have uh, a zone that is like moving a lot forward. Okay. Uh, next, we have the big payoff uh, bind move, mm -hmm. which is the dodge forward guard break. There you go. Uh, kind of like a demon embrace. Huh. It deals immediate damage and it chains uh, into your chain lights, your chain heavies. Uh, oh. All that good stuff. And you can even perform Weird. it after any light in chain. It's probably feignable. Uh, so you can target swap and hit someone uh, in a good fight surprise. Uh, and you'll understand uh, like why we're doing this a bit later when we get into the axes more. You'll see. Yes. Um, I think that covers... Oh, yeah, I guess we got the guard break. Uh, guard break punish, kind of uh, not uh, the usual one. So you'll have a top guard break punish for this hero. Remember, if you're playing Warlord, you know that you have to go top mm -hmm. to get that guaranteed heavy. Uh, with Magi, don't do side or you'll get this. Not a fun time. Okay, so just um, top. Otherwise, uh, I think we're ready to go. Uh, I think so. Let's let's just kind of sum up this form a little bit. Mm -hmm. So if you're in uh, staff mode, you've got big trajectories, you've got uninterruptible stance, uh, and you've got a really good gank melee move that lets you do uh, direct Wait, damage. Wait, uh, uninterruptible? So it's kind of speaking to you as like, if you're in a group is he all fight, hyper armored? Group fight uh, mode. And that the you lane as well, I guess. It's good for clearing uh, it's very good for clearing the lane uh, in my humble opinion at least no, no. <laughs> <laughs> but everyone's opinion I yeah think. okay <laughs> perfect uh so that's basically we've seen one mode uh this is what you want to use it for oh finish uh, your heavies so okay the question is, what's the second mode? all right so yeah. i mean uh, we're, we're gonna talk about the mode switch a bit i guess uh so mm. walk back and guard break is your i called it switch wow. uh, long arm move. i so call that to take some time <laughs> to switch between modes you are a bit vulnerable while you're doing, uh, doing this, so you don't want to be caught with your pants down, uh, wanting to switch in the middle of a fight. Mm -hmm. uh, but we have ways to speed that up. So, for example, you want to be in access mode uh, coming into a fight. Yeah, this is a duel. I'm like, I don't want to be in staff mode. Boom. You can Ooh. enter lock, back and guard break, and it's going to be a quick transform, we call. Uh, okay. Same thing for every recovery that the character has can be canceled with this uh, quick transform, so you can be in the oh, mode that's that cool. have, uh, as fast as possible, 
and we even have it on a parry cancel. So if Steph, you want to throw a heavy, there you go. You can switch stance and That's still cool get your guaranteed damage that you would have had from like the heavy or light parry. So not only like you can just just uh, switch the mode like that, but you can really like do like a follow up like attack axe. Like yeah, it's you cool. Can it's have, cool like that it's healing, a yeah. really cool flow it's when you know, when it gets going for sure. It's super cool to see. Nice. I love uh, what we did here. Yeah, I'm super happy with it on parry especially because that's a time a lot of times we were like, oh, I thought it was a duel, but now it's a group fight. Mm -hmm. So I got to parry off at some point and I can transform into the mode I want mm -hmm. or vice versa. Yeah. And while you're an axe, uh, Ben, remember when we did like a hit reaction in axe? That was a big challenge that we had because it was always going back into a staff. And uh, thank you to Tarek and the GPP team to, to help uh, helping us uh, creating like uh, magic, programmer magic, <laughs> to make it happen. So I don't know if you can show like uh, when you get it into Axe. So get it hit. There Let's you go. go. So yeah, I mean this hero has been a long time coming. He like, doesn't have reflex card. A lot of work. To oh my do god. Before we even started. He doesn't have reflex on. card. Thank so, God. Uh, it's a great achievement, and it's super cool that we get. Yeah. To can, show can, it up can we see some execution as well? Uh, I mean, we're gonna get back in guard break to switch inputs. Oh, okay. Yes. I'm. I'm just too excited. Calm Sorry. down. Sorry, Calm I'm down. too excited. <laughs> I mean, she's the animator girl, so for, of course she has to see the executions. We'll, we'll see it all. <laughs> all right. So, uh, Medjai <laughs> in Axe's mode, uh, he is. He has move parity. That's what we call it. I don't know if we made that up, but it means <laughs> that whatever you're pressing in one mode, uh, it's going to do something in the other mode. So if I go dodge forward uh, heavy in access mode, there's something there. If I do side dodge heavy in access mode, there's something there. If I do zone, obviously there's a zone. If I do um, the dodge forward uh, guard break, instead of being a big bind move, it's a super quick unreactable bash. Uh, that okay. this time guarantees a light and, of course, combos into itself infinitely for as long as I have stamina. Oh, wow. Uh, and it's not very much damage, have though. the heavy finishers that, instead of having initiable stance, have um, some good, good old unblockable property to really force a reaction out of your opponent. So, so what you're saying there with the input parity is basically like, we taught you all the moves that you have in uh, staff mode. Mm -hmm. So using the same inputs that you've seen there, you can do the same character uh, kind of flow mm -hmm. in the axe mode, and you get moves basically. So yeah, they have different properties and different use cases, but uh, uh, basically, uh, yeah, there yeah. you go. So uh, like, there is literally do two move sets, mm -hmm. but since you know, so like, you know this is going to be the duelist one, set. You know the, the other ones for team one, fights. And then it's just a matter of having. There's like, not any reason to use the other one for duels. Chain lights. Uh, and maybe uh, to catch dodge attacks or something. Finishes. Uh, so I think that gets us to the executions, right? Yes. Okay. Oh. That's it? Oh, right. come on. Oh, There's got to be more than that. Uh, let's see him real quick. I got this guy. So. <laughs> so we have so much fun in mocap, like, doing this okay. stuff. Like, detach, attach, detach, attach during the execution. I love it. And, uh... If you are in access mode, you will be reverting to staff mode uh, if you start uh, an execution. If you're going to the hope you have a timer. VPN. And if you go oh. out of block, same thing here. So, uh, yeah, that's a good, a good thing to know. Uh, but that's why we have the shortcuts to go into access mode whenever you want. So what would be the logical transition if you play a hero, like in terms of uh, fight kit or play style, like to play the Magi? This is going to be Zerker. Uh, I think it depends what you're used to, basically. Like, if you... <laughs> yeah, this is so that's a berserker execution. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty bloody though. Uh, if you if you're used to big trajectory characters, your JJs, your Griffins, uh, then you will, I think, quite naturally learn mm -hmm. the uh, the group fight aspect of this, the staff mode side of this. And if you're used to some of the characters that can kind of nuke you down quickly if things go their way, uh, the assassins or berserker, let's say, uh, you'll quite quickly. Uh, learn how to do the flow uh, for axe mode, basically. Exactly. So, should we get into the feeds next? <gasps> yes, we should do that. Yeah, okay. Right? Do that. Right. The hero looks pretty. Aside from having two stances, <laughs> he looks kind of basic for the it most does. part. <laughs> That's why I said uh, duality earlier. Mm. So, I'm super happy that we managed to do this. It was a hurdle, but we managed to do a hero where each of the feats has two different uses. So basically oh, the so they did do that. Like eight feet. Sweet. Uh, let's. Roll the video, uh, the videos. Uh, so on the first feat, uh, we have the Sunshine Strength. Uh, 
when you get a kill in staff mode uh, for the duration of your life, you will now have a defense buff for as long as you live. So as soon as you die, you're going to lose it. But you're in access mode, you're in staff mode. As soon as you get that buff, you're going to keep it. Okay, uh, it's not much. Next, we have the Little bit. opposite effect in access mode. If you get a kill and you have that, uh, that feat activated, mm -hmm. you will now get a passive attack buff for the duration of your life. And the fun part, the quest, as we call it, <laughs> is that once you get both okay. buffs, oh, you can get both buffs at once. And so you are a passively buffed defense and attack hero for the rest of your life. And that's, that's even scarier, knowing what the hero can do. The buffs exactly. aren't so too crazy. Like, pieces, so maybe 10% kind of at most. You say your quest in each life is try to get a kill in one mode, and then you get to keep the defensive buff, the little green thing you see on the shoulders. Mm -hmm forever until you die uh, and then ideally if you get it in the other mode then you get the attack one as well you see your hands glowing and your shoulders glowing and you'll be like i'm buffed all the time there you go <laughs> <laughs> all right moving on to the second feed the okay. uh, moonlight drain uh which uh, as its name implies is a debuff so if you hit your melee bind attack uh with the staff mode uh, you'll see a debuff on your opponent that debuffs uh its defense so this is your bid Okay. Move, so 27 move without it. That will hopefully have your allies nearby ready to do heavies. Mm -hmm. And if you're at 32 you're with it, oh, that's a good debuff. Time, he's going to eat a lot of damage. So it fits really well with the game plan. And if we go with the staff equivalent, uh, the axes equivalent, Ax, yeah. sorry, uh, you hit your little unreactable buff there. That's going to apply a debuff on the attack of the opponent, giving you an edge in that combat in that duel. Right, I just uh, bash spam everybody. everybody. Take a bit more damage and since it's a uh, move that you'll be landing often, you can expect your opponent to be debuffed uh, pretty much the whole fight, I would guess. I like that both like Staff and Axe, they kind of like talk to That's each a strong other second the feat. Like, they're kind of similar, but different, depending on the mode, so I feel like it's... it's exactly, so we, we, had a, we had an opportunity to have mm -hmm. a feat set that... The knee is probably uh, going to be a target swap thing. thing. I don't think you're going to actually hit enemies in a duel with axes it. Makes sense for you in Axes and the stuff you get in Axe. Thank you, Squishy. Well. So, Perfect example is the third feat, uh, Scarab Relief, which I in staff is a AoE healing around you. You're going to be in a group fight with uh, Medjay a lot, so that's what you want to have. Um, and if nice. you are in access mode, it's a greedy mode. You're in a 1v1. You want to get healing for yourself, or it's going to be more healing. Second win, essentially. Nice. Counterpart. I but, like that. Uh, yeah, honestly, it's just a greedy, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> a greedy <laughs> aspect. Uh, I love that both like uh, like if staff your whole kit is about being like group fighting, mm -hmm. and it's reflected in the feet here especially. This yep. is super good. You can heal your friends, and then vice versa. If you're an axe, your whole mode is about one v oneing. So if you can heal yourself for a bit more than you could heal, a I like this. I like how the feats are different. And there you go. This is and one thing I was really hoping for. Uh, reflects that as well on the feet four. We have on staff a big uh, projectile AOE that you can throw around and hit people uh, that are bunched up in a group fight uh, for uh, medium damage. And then you have the access mode, which if you've been paying attention, oh. is a single target projectile that deals Ooh. a crap ton of damage to just one person. Uh, I like that. That pretty much covers all of the feats. We are super curious to see how this stealth's gonna out, fuck it up. Uh, but in, uh, it's in everybody the else. Scene and the casual Ew. scene, everyone. Yeah. So about, about that, what? That's which, strong, uh, man. Com uh, composition, like uh, the Not team. Not busted, but it's strong. With like Medjai, like having Medjai on your team, what will work the best? Uh, I think there's a lot of variety actually to this because of the duality aspect. You can kind of play Medjai a little bit differently depending on either your situation or your team's comp or your skill set. Mm -hmm. Uh, do you need to win the big group fight in mid? Go into staff mode and go try to do that. Do you need to hold this point and win a 1v1 to, to keep your team together? You can go to axe mode and you can actually get it done. You uh, have a lot of options. Exactly. So so who are his friends going to turn out to be? It depends how versatile you are. It depends how uh, I think your team is set, basically. That's so great. So, I mean, we're going to watch show that a zone. I think it's the same the thing, honestly. Community for the exhibition match. Probably a little less range, Thank though. Thank you so much, guy, for the explanation. And uh, see you soon. Uh, so Ooh, here over here. we can see the evolution of the this weapon. Uh, Honestly, I like the default in the, the left. Um, original Mechai weapon that was uh, inherited by his um, ancestors. And while okay, uh, that last one there looks moving, pretty good. We see that the shape is uh, getting more and more complicated. They definitely get a lot better later on. More interesting patterns. <laughs> like drastically and, better. Uh, 
different like designs that was inspired mm, by Egyptian mythology. Oh, these look. They go from lower class to Bill Gates up here. Uh, here, the, the theme of the epic weapons uh, is Egyptian gods, mm -hmm. and also some um, history moments uh, that happened in Magi's uh, history. Mm -hmm. Yes, and uh -huh. now you can see my. Got a lot of weapons from Roeus, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh, I love it. The, so the, the the character is great. The conception the the conception of this character, the weapon. But well, you spoke about armor variation, Andrew. Can we see them? Of course. Let's roll. Let's <laughs> roll. <laughs> well, as Steph mentioned, uh, this time we are have, we have a uh, two sets and the three variations mm -hmm. each, and three variations will have an uh, alternate version of uh, each variation. So basically, there's a one with the hat, and there's a, the other one without the hat. Uh, many variations, so player will be able to play and customize in different ways because the one and the other has a different options on it. It's a fantastic fashion that they have it, and of course, as we go through, we'll be able to see all these uh, gods uh, figuring of uh, the mask throughout the presentation. I really love it. Oh my god. This one is Ooh, It's funny, Anastasia, dude. because y you mentioned the intricate Look part. Look at that one. That looks that creepy. That was part of the uh, uh, first conversation we had, because we, we had to make oh, it like, the same? happen fast for gameplay purposes, but also make okay, sense. Okay, no, they're very so slightly this different. This one has magnets. I don't know if they have magnets. Uh, <laughs> and maybe not. It's another one of the Magi secrets. Okay. Okay, <laughs> okay, there's so more. He brought God. magnet into it more. So we used that, but at first we used a, uh, a twist, but I mocap it just didn't work out really well. So that was a bit... Uh, a bit weird to uh, to handle as well. So wow. one's got oh, an ornament on top, bad. one doesn't. Which god is that? Is Anubis. Wow. Another thing that's fun to I love anything with Anubis, one, dude. One, uh, something that we're doing this time around is that on oh, the, the hero an alligator. Website, mm -hmm. um, Ew. On the website, uh, we'll have a list of all the weapon names and as well as the uh, lore descriptions. Yeah, so without the top we'll ornament to there. why they're called, what, what they're called. It gives a bit of context. Oh, and more uh, like body paint weapons and give them a bit of. History as well. I, I love more lore attached to a weapon because I feel like Is that you a bird? when you choose it, it's not only visual, it's like the backstory. So you're like more into it because you choose a weapon for this reason. So exactly, do you have a favorite yeah. one? Yeah, my favorite one is uh, we call it the Night Claws. And it's basically the weapon that was wielded by this uh, sort of like black ops. I'm hoping the colors really stick out when you put color to patterns to on them. Execute specific because pirates targets. stick out really well. Uh, I'm not evil. I just people don't read the stream title. I'm just gonna make sure they don't. I'm just I'm just not gonna let them have the satisfaction of getting a proper answer. <laughs> okay, interesting centurion. I I bet that would look really funky. Oh, dude, look at the Egyptian style BP. There's actually some really good armor sets that could go good with that. Okay, Griffin just looks silly. Griffin looks silly. What the fuck is that Lawbringer armor? What? I don't know how to feel about that. I don't know how to feel about that. Like, the helmet is so unique. Also, I kind of like the Conqueror. I like the PK, too. I, dude, I actually like the Warmonger. I, I actually like some of those. Those aren't too bad, but... They're very unique. I guess the Egyptian aspect is what makes it so unique. Also, there's no music right now. Bro, the Raider looks terrified. <laughs> Look at his face. <laughs> I had to screenshot that shit. Hold on, sorry. <laughs> I had to screenshot it. Now there's music. Zerker, eh, he's always been mid. Actually, no below. Really bad. The color's good, though. I like the color. The color looks really good. Highlander, he looks edgy as fuck. Yorm looks like... I don't know what he looks like, honestly. I really don't even describe Yorm. Warlord. Not as good as Warlord can do. Jeez. They gave Shaman the fucking... Uh, Egyptian queen look of all the eyeliner there. Valg looks actually really good. Valkyrie actually looks pretty pretty good. Insay looking kind of chunky, man. The sword looks good though. Orochi, nah. 
I'll say no on Orochi here. Shinobi. I've seen worse. No. No, in my opinion. Ito could have been better, too. No, Mikyoshin definitely looks more Egyptian in the eyes there. Now, Goki, let's see how he looks. Okay, I think Goki's the best out of them for sure. It's still not great, but definitely better. Look at that Nobu mask. Looks like she's having a stroke. Is that be dripping? It's a very unique drip. I don't know if I would say it's good necessarily, but it's really accented. It sticks out like crazy. Okay, Tiandi is... Eh. Could be worse. Really colorful, at least. Okay, not... it could be worse, I guess. See how bad Jang Jun is. Yeah, that's right. I didn't like the Jang Jun. <laughs> this from the free pass? Uh, I think so. If not, it's just stuff you can get, probably. John Who? Uh, not bad. I think the hat's good. And the armor actually matched pretty well. Nusha, I, I mean, honestly, I'm surprised they chose that headpiece, but the armor looks fine. Like, the body and uh, arms actually look really good. Let's see this Egyptian pirate. Honestly, probably the best headpiece they could have used. It looks clean. I like the white and gold. The LB is so fucking accented though on his armor. I think LB and Conquerors were the best. I may be a little bit biased. I would say LB, Conk, BP, Warmonger, and Valkyrie. I like them the best. Recap what we'll be going over in this patch notes section. Uh, we've got some armor variations for the pirate. Uh, that Improvement are on we stamina. Earlier in the year, that there would be some user inflow 2.0 in, into later. Improvement in the year. targetable so feats. Yes, grenades will hit people. We've got a new revised and remove parry flash indicator with Lily Gabrielle. Uh, okay, as well as good fuck, players. Targetable feats and parry flash. Can't win indicators. by looking so at like parry flash anymore. For like the, uh, the one percent that can do that. Three? All this stuff that you hmm. see here in this list, other than that, is uh is coming next week. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> armor variations for pirates specifically. Uh, so first up, armor variations for Ooh! pirate. We have two variations that will be. Coming I like the little in, wolf. Uh, in this update, they are the devourer pirate uh, variation set, and so I like you get that. a cake with this. You'll be able to make all the warden mains jelly, uh, and it's a good looking set. Why I would really warden like mains be jealous? All over with the fur. Uh, and then oh, devour alternate. The devour alternate, 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 alternate. Yeah. It's like she has face paint. <laughs> uh, with but it. it has a great tattoo on the face that is affected by your material, and so these two will be okay. coming in this to you, and then the other two will be coming in the following to you. And so, uh, pirates getting some fashion on, so you can you can look good when you walk the plank. You know what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> so let's Bruh. jump into user end flow. Lily Gabrielle, your team worked uh, uh, really hard on yes. this. So what is this, this for mean? the Am I end of games? Get to spam A less? No, <laughs> you're still gonna be able to spam A. We don't want to take that away from you, but you're gonna <laughs> get like uh, the expected result, which is getting to the tab faster. So the main issue we had with the old end flow was all the flashy animation and the pop-ups. The pop-ups were making the experience very intrusive and long for the player. So now you're going to get to the tabs faster if you want to. And all the tabs have a new layout. So everything, yeah. hero progression, battle pass progression, the dual rank, uh, the rewards, and the next match option have a new look and feel. So we really focused on the players. We wanted them to have a better understanding of the progression they made in the previous match. So faster, clearer, more efficient, and very good looking. The art team did a great job. So yeah, we're really happy with the results. 
have better, faster, stronger. So does this mean I'm going to be able to have enough time to deploy my troops, rearrange my orders, and It looks like it's going to take longer, but will. it's smoother. You only have one minute, but if you're fast enough on the A button, you will have enough I time. I can yeah. get some fashion done quick. Cool. I'm real good at it. <laughs> it looks like it's going to take longer, So this though. is awesome because, yeah, I, that... Definitely looks better, but so it looks like it's going to take a, longer. Especially if you have... Uh, you know, the battle pass or, you know, yes. there's an event pass. Going okay, if it's skippable, it's then like, that's come great. On, come, on, come on, I need to get stuff done. Exactly. So this is really nice. Mm -hmm. I, I like this a lot. I'm cool with those changes. Mr. Stefan, what are you doing? This stamina time, changes? <laughs> and they show <laughs> Lawbringer out of stamina? Play, uh, <laughs> than you have seen in the previous few matches. Why but, is that uh, so funny to me? You, you see a couple benefits coming really quickly. So first, when you're out of stamina, uh, the stamina pause will no longer apply in that case. Uh, and then second, whenever you stand up from oh. the unbalanced state, you're going to re fully replenish your stamina. So what are sent me? Oh, do? <laughs> <laughs> I think everyone's going to be all right. Uh, I think it's just you live in the land of like a gray screen a lot less. You see here in this video, uh, Hitokiri knocks down the, uh, the Lawbringer, gets one full punish of light heavy, I want to say, uh, or light light, I guess it looks like. Um, but then oh, yeah, that's current. Into another unblockable. And you're like, well, I got to either parry this or take damage. And if you parry it, you go right back to the floor a lot of times. So we don't like that. We want players to get out of out of stamina. So after update, punish, it's going to look like that. But we don't want too big punishes. The fact that they so use Synth, though, is a terrible punishes. example. Because he already yeah, does this. I've been caught by that. By Scent Mains before. You, you know, you get... Dude, you get poor Scent Mains. You get back up. Poor your you Mains. Eat the kick. And then you're right back. Oh, in. bro, your mains are fucked. It's rough to be out of stamina, but Yorm's even uh, worse because his like, like good punish from guard break. You throw him down, like less you do your whiff light or exactly. punch okay. into cool. an unblockable uh, hammer, and then would so knock him away. Uh, I think that's and you get your slam. To, I don't think you're gonna be able to do that anymore. <laughs> and uh, then because they're gonna get their stamina feats. back when they get up. Am I still gonna be able to yeet the feet? Yeah, exactly. I mean, you can throw your feet. Oh, he's gonna get his hammer slam when you're unlocked. You can throw it in the wrong place, like we may have seen earlier as well. Oops. No uh, one but did I've that. Done that before. <laughs> no, no one did that. This no is a change that should have been done a long time ago. YOLO <laughs> that yeeted the feet into the bridge. Anyway, we're, we're going to get beat up after this segment. <laughs> <but> <laughs> um, so basically, yeah, we want we want that to still be possible, but we want it uh, when you are locked and you throw a feet at a locked target that it actually goes kind of where you expect. And the two What's cases the point of that, stealth that now? Uh, before, you still won't uh, be seen on the radar. Or if your opponent was dodging. And they won't be able to see uh, your health very well. wouldn't go near them. By the look it of it. It would go like a thousand miles away, and you're like, what's up with that? Uh, stealth was too strong, in my opinion, well. anyways. Yeah, because there have been It just negated so many, every projectile, pretty like, much. I've seen, like, uh, you know, Fire Flask or something just whip right through a shot. That they could just recreate this without trying? Throw it, like... Like here in this the shows how bad it is currently. Right? Like, so players were actually unlocking to throw it at the Shinobi properly here. So, so that was before, and now here you can see. Because we got a GB is out of stay on punish. Only if you go for heavy, heavy light. You can still do heavy, heavy into another heavy, or even a shove. You can still dodge in and get away, and everything's good for them if they are dodging and stuff. But but it is a neuter to his his punish as well. Of course, you can't do the triple anymore. Parry flash indicator. What are you tweaking here? And I think both of you work together on this, like both of your teams. It's it's a full team for everything, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah, and everything's got to get done this way. So I mean, like in terms of what we're trying to do, we're LB trying to dodge stack. He already has it. Yes, I dodge up to have this parry flash indicator. Yeah. Uh, so the team added uh, an option in the custom match menu to enable and disable it, so it's optional. Exactly. Perfect. Perfectly <laughs> said. Thank you for the save. <laughs> Nailed it. Uh, but yeah, so if you're in regular matchmaking, it's not going to apply. You're still going to get the parry uh, indicator as normal gameplay. Nothing's being taken away. Oh, and wait. This is only in, uh, in customs and custom training, so I guess. For the smooth brains out there like myself, um, what is this? what's the benefit of doing this? So if you're watching this, you can see that little red flash uh, that happens on the other vid video before this. And now that little red flash is gone. Uh, okay. So what we're going to is that competitive players will be able to turn it off in their custom matches to be able to be like the reaction monsters okay. and everybody else are kind of on the same footing where they can't yeah it's off for public because be public like, is not meant attack, therefore i parry use typically for players that can react to this therefore realize because it's such a tight okay. reaction so window equalizer. most people that's, can't that's react to that yeah. okay 99.9% cool. awesome. of people can't and react to that flash. like thank like thank you so much for all of your work on all of this you guys thanks for joining 
on the Warriors Den. So awesome to have you, Lily Gabrielle. Thank you awesome so much. Good deal with cheaters. It's true. <laughs> so, uh, Go help with cheaters too. Right back with. Um, so we have two tournament types we're going to be talking about today. But mm -hmm. first, Clarissa, let's talk about Dominion Series. Yeah. Well, uh, just to catch uh, people up because it has been a while since we talked about competitive anything related. Yeah. Uh, the Dominion Series. After is all the bullshit our that happened last year. Program that we announced first in year four. And this year, or at least the Dominion Series 2021, was our second iteration of the program. Um, it just concluded in February, so first congratulations to those winners. And, you know, it's really cool because this was, you know, like, ever since we announced running official competitive programs, since year four, we were able to experience different formats. You know, and I think what's really cool about this time around is we are with some of the community members who have been behind the scenes, who have been helping us as well. Um, working with our partners, so the one thing uh, is there was a lot like of cheaters first, caught last uh, year. Like I mentioned before, Dominion Series 2021 was the first time we ran a full year of competitive, like something every season. And I think that's something to commend f to everyone involved, all the players, all the all the people in the like the on their talent, um, and just. Uh, Mosman probably really just cool. so I can put some videos but, up uh, on you YouTube know, for perfect? the people who missed no. it. There <laughs> obviously it wasn't perfect. There were a lot of things that we learned from it. So uh, the reason why we haven't been saying anything since February was because we wanted to take time to sit back, yep. think about what has been going on, um, you know, also look through all the feedback that we've gotten from players, from pe the viewers, and just like really take time to address um, all of these things. Because yeah. clearly we there, there are a few things that have been very reoccurring even before the Dominion series, such as like the gap between our pro players and everyone else. In Probably the later, Fluffly. The casual player base. Like but I am going to take a small break to edit some videos. One. Yeah, so the the whole goal for year six, at least, is to, one, we still want to, um, we still want to support the competitive scene, for sure. Um, and we want to take what we learned for the past, not just Dominion series 2021, but just the past two years, two, three years, I don't know, COVID, you know? Yeah, because yeah. we've been looking at it. Roman stuff. uppercut? Yeah. So. And what do you mean? Just, like, take time to, like, take what we learned from that well, and on put it. it forward, which is why I think the the two tournaments that you mentioned earlier is it's really exciting to... Uh, it did announce that they're going to implement Highlander's so Dodge yeah. Attack, but I don't know oh, if sorry, they mean ahead, with this man. coming patch. I'm just saying. That'd be cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's going to be good. <laughs> yeah, so let's uh, let's take a second. Let's jump into it. Uh, what do we what do we have? Tracking's here? off on yes, it. I don't think so the tracking's the terrible. The it's just a variably timed bash thing. Is into Doesn't the fray work on like uh, into the fray. 2022. Delayable dodge attacks, um, the high iframes. Will, it's going to follow a different format compared to. But it does before. have the worst fate window. Um, I agree. The first thing that we would like to mention is that into the fray this time around. We'll Probably because we'll it's be a good team with tool. With these little three people here, which is why they're on the couch with us. I don't want it super fanable, I'm assuming, but who knows? more about Into the Fray. Mm, thank you. So for those of you who may be into the familiar fray. with Into the Fray, at least the name, you may have heard of it at least two years ago. Back in 2020, uh, it was ran by yourselves. And essentially, it was uh, just a giant community tournament that people could enter. And, well, it's in the name, Into the Fray. It was simple rules, simple concept, simple execution. However... The spice must flow, and now in 2022, we have to up our game. So, what are we doing for 2022 this time round? Well, uh, Into the Fray 2022 will be similar to Into the Fray, where it's open to the whole community, and we're trying to bring in as many people as possible. But the first thing that will be different is it will be streamed. Uh, yeah, I don't have these issues, Johnny. Casters, like Verbosity, and it'll be a Not the ones you're having. I'm to sorry, bro. Us. So, you'll be able to, to when you're playing, you'll be able to watch your mates, uh, have your mates watch you. Get your highlights immortalized forever, and your blunders forgotten about. So are these going to be four tournaments? Right? So they're going to be exist. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the most important thing is we are splitting the way we run the tournament and the people who can enter it, so that you don't run into the issue which a lot of players had. We have to listen to your feedback. You play and you get matched up against Nemesis in your first match, and uh, mm -hmm. it's not always a fun time for you. Um, so we are splitting it into a pro bracket and an amateur bracket. Um, Pro and AM group, as it were. However, the rules on this are specific, right, Nutella? Uh, yes. Well, first off, the Pro and AM group am. get split. The amateur group, we have each platform playing two different events. It's a cross-region tournament, and it's double elimination in terms of the rule set, uh, the format. The rule set, however, is Conquest, which mm -hmm. is a nifty little thing. 
But first, let's look at the pro group where we'll have the amateurs from the pl PC go over there, and then the people who qualified for Dominion Series last year, well, this year, well, no, actually 2021, yeah, mm -hmm. where it'll be a two day event. Uh, uh, two day event, which will also be cross region. Makes sense. Conquest format still, but round robin. So we get the most matches. We find out who the real winner is. So you can yeah. pr prove your metal. Yeah. And of course, nobody who had c previously competed in the Dominion Series majors are allowed to play in the amateur group. Yeah. So, you know, you're not going to get stomped by Nemesis in your yeah. first match. Don't worry about yeah. that. However, of course, do notice it's previously qualified the, the Dominion Series major. That's the only rule. So technically, in amateur, you could get run over by like a duo of like Mr. Sheep and Kenzo, technically. Well, so yeah, yeah, yeah. something yeah. to consider. However, do notice the other little word in that. Man, conquest. they brought Mr. Sheep and Kenzo in. Bro, throw John a liner What is there. Conquest? Well, you might conquest get a long arm based, in the amateur uh, group. Change we're making based to the... Sorry, a change we're making to the, the matches, not the tournament, the match format, based on the feedback we've had from people watching and playing, that it's very boring, or more boring, to run into the same characters over and over again. Mm. And the aim of the Conquest format is to increase the number of characters that are played, to add in some extra tactical variety, and just make it more entertaining to watch and play. So, essentially what it does, it's a very simple rule. When you win with the hero, you cannot play that hero again in the same best of three. If you lose, you can still play the same hero. Okay, uh, I like that. If you want to win a best of three, you have to use your team has to use eight different heroes. So obviously, we're going to potentially double the amount of heroes. That's great. I love that. Okay, we've got a little example that I'm going to show you how this works. Um, we are using emojis rather than for honor characters. So you know, just to keep it simple. Just to keep it simple, yeah. And also, <laughs> you know, I'm a wizard main. You can see it down there. <laughs> I'm a so wizard, to start off with, man. We have my team, uh, team B, and the third team, team A. We ha we have two different compositions. Natal's team wins. They are no longer allowed to play their characters they just won with. So no detective for Natal. Um, we move on. I, despite being a wizard main, I didn't have a good game in, in the first one, so I switched to detective as well. Uh, I managed to win this. My team managed to win this one, and we go on to a decider. Again, my team now can no longer play those characters. I like this better um, than doing bands personally. It goes forward. And then Natal finally wins, and you know you still get to see the claims, top heroes. Claims his reward, but uh, not every single game is the same team. As you can see, the number of team. characters that we see, there's a much more diverse cast of emojis available, and we'll see the same thing with Verona characters. Yeah, I could probably play in a pro is, version, but the thing win, is, I wouldn't play with. I'd probably play hero with buddies. Set if you win, so who are I not you've got a deep pros. reservoir of heroes to pick <laughs> so from because you can't. That would be my thing. That's why we'd be in the amateur. Once you've won a match and you go into your next one, or if you lose and you go into the second bracket in a double elimination format, uh, you can pick the he same heroes again. So this is just per match. <laughs> Dracula mains, where you at? We're expecting <laughs> people to play 64 different heroes if you have uh, loads and loads of matches. We have 64 yeah. now? What? Oh, uh, yeah. Sorry about that. You're going to be casting <laughs> for a long time, buddy. <laughs> it's not that many. <laughs> 64 teams yeah. of getting confused. And so what dates can players be looking for, Clarissa? What prizes? Like, what, what are the nitty-gritty deets? Well, uh, the dates for sure is that it will begin on August 13th, and it will run until September 4th. So each day there's going to be a specific oh, not August. Okay. event for a specific category. But for the last one, uh, it's going to be We have it for each different platform, And too. the reason why we put Pro Pre-C at the bottom is because the winners of the AMPC will be invited to fight in the pro PC. So, you know, now it's like you won against the amateurs, but can you fight with the pros? And mm. you know, Our internet would be way too surprises. bad for that you team comp. You never know, but um, it's, and like what they said before, they, these will be broadcasted for sure. Um, and regarding pricing, there is a total prize pool of 10000 Yeah, Zay, they've shown everything. I was almost going to say yeah. the, the, <laughs> the I'll post again. the video <laughs> later <laughs> showing it though. 10, Ten big ones. 10000 <laughs> overall together. Um, and and there 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 may be more perhaps yeah. maybe a participation reward for those who sign up. The battlefly.com slash into the fray with some dashes uh, in there. Maybe an exclusive reward for those of you who do want to sign up for so, like that. It's an amateur pro everything. tournament now. Um, all you want to look good. Yeah. Or just amateur tournament. Like all of the information <laughs> is down <laughs> below at battlefly.com slash into the fray. Just to note that you cannot register yet. You won't see those tournaments up ready. Yo, Dad Lounge. Thank you, you bro. You can go into the Your hero looks interesting. For you and, you know, all the questions. It looks like he's going to be a little bit tricky. Uh, you can post him in there. You I don't think he's going to be like super great, Spaniard. like OP or anything. Uh, but he looks yeah. like he's going to be super tricky. We're there. We, you know, you can Which I like. I'm cool. I like tricky. Our DMs are open for questions about the rule set. 
that. Yes, and slight opinions. Opinions, yes, yes. Ooh la la. And, you know, it's important to make sure you read the rules as well because uh, this is the first time we No, you don't have to hold the button. Conquest, but Conquest has been a format that has been run Use the longer arm input to by change. community members before. Mm -hmm. I still yeah. remember the first time I competed in a Conquest tournament, and yeah. I didn't know oh how it really worked. So <laughs> more of the story here is make sure you read all the rules and everything, and you know just have fun with it. Yeah, yeah they banned certain feats for like certain like characters and stuff too. Oh, you know, evangelize yeah. competitive, <laughs> playing competitive, even if you like. Yeah, I did call it, didn't well I? And you have bad matches. I was just worried, bro. Like, like, I thought it was going to be a hero. <laughs> <laughs> that first off, that you didn't oh. have the hold. You can still I have a like, lot of fun playing. That'd be a, cool. A group but I thought it'd be reflex talk, guard. And I'm so yeah, happy it's, it's not. It's just so much better than playing solo matchmaking with teammates. They probably do ban don't know what they're doing And are just going to run in and ruin your punishment. They probably ban Pugio for since. Sometimes it feels like you're fighting seven players. When, you know, you should be fighting four. And have your three friends backing you up. So, it's really fun. All PI of the is probably banned. Who I've taken into matches and done practice. Yeah, Medjay's uh, or Magi, whatever the fuck really his name is. It. So if it's not something you've tried, smoke before, bombs not banned give anymore. It a shot. I think you'll love it, and we'll hopefully make it something you can love. However, oh. I heard. However, something you can love. Yeah. However, <laughs> I heard two. You said tournaments two, not one. Yeah, two. Oh yeah, two. Yes. two. That's yes. not all. <laughs> so. With uh, Into the Fray kind of satisfying that, like, Tier 2, we've got Dominion Series Tier 1, Tier 2. Uh, me being me and always thinking, you know, community developer, thinking about, like, okay, now what segments of the community, like, aren't being addressed or, like, spoken to with these things? Fashion. I was like, you know what? We need to go bigger. We need to go th Tier 3. We mm -hmm. just need something Ooh. that is super accessible that anyone can get into. And uh, so we are rolling out pro-am tournaments. So these differ in Into the Fray. And like, uh, That's I nice. won't say I made that. I <laughs> stole someone else's work and mashed oh. it together. So <laughs> thank consent. you, thank you, Aaron, for, <laughs> yeah. for your work <laughs> on Bring the in the magenta. I like well, it. Well, so Ar Aaron's our artist that did all of the- It's not stealing, it's outsourcing. <laughs> hey, yeah. Like, yeah, uh, he's inspired but, uh, by my outfit as well, wasn't <laughs> it? Yeah. yeah. He did, he did the artwork for the thumbnails for the skill challenge series, and I was like, Aaron, I yeah. love this. Can I reuse your work? And he was like, yeah, man, go nuts. And I was like, yes, awesome. So anyway, uh, the pro-am format is really simple. It's we're going to take two pros, two amateurs. That's a team. Mm -hmm. And then it's going to be a 4v4 Dominion. However, there's a catch. The pro side are going to be randomly seated. Mm. So as an amateur, you'll be able to sign up with your buddy and have like that safety, you know, brothers in arms thing. Uh, but if you're a pro, you're going to get scrambled like an uh, like an egg, right? Yeah. And so, and that way, uh, I could probably do good in a tournament like this because I would be considered probably happen, amateur. Uh, while also keeping it like really fun and accessible, uh, we're going to stream these on the For Honor. Twitch, Despite thinking like I could probably keep up with a lot yeah. of the pros, um, I'd probably consider at least by Ubisoft as an amateur. Com like a competitive light style play, yeah. you kind of yeah. test that water uh, without having to worry about like, oh, I don't want For Honor to become like a sweaty experience mm -hmm. or like give up my day job or any of that. It's a game to me, but like I would like something more in terms it's of like It's an interesting concept, but so what's going to end up happening so is you're going to have, have like the amateurs for the top, and top when they're level, playing they're these, into the fray, they're going to see the pros like and nice run. <laughs> the That's what's going to happen. They're going to run. Yeah. Yeah. They're going to get so like, mad at like the two pros. With the pro-amps. No, they're going to be a lot of fun. Being well-known is not the same as being an amateur. They're going to be more casual focused. They're going to be more fun, more zany. Uh, I'm being not like well the known. Logo suggests, and uh, for prizing, uh, we're gonna have some uh, 3D printed statues oh, drawn up nice. of, of like those. the original, like year one, like poster. Long arm the pros. Heroes you know, I would go longer. for it. Bro. There's absolutely no bias in there <laughs> at all. Zero. No. Nope. <laughs> None detected. I make the decisions. Yeah, you. <laughs> he wants his mummy. And so you guys can all look for Max with the cameras. <laughs> 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 you guys can look forward to all of this uh, and more details coming soon. And I got to pee, you guys. I got to pee. The Discord Dojo oh, yeah. is yes. a great place where you can prepare for uh, pro -ams. I've heard the Discord uh, Dojo is so been, toxic. Uh, I don't know how true that is, but I've heard it's yeah. extremely toxic. I've been working with my team uh, across the year on the Discord Dojo uh, and making that kind of an info hub and a place for players to come in, meet up with other players, Finally complete that Allied Warrior challenge or and order. And, and learn uh, whilst you're doing yeah. it. Yes. Yeah. And improve, yeah. improve. 
And so uh, join the Discord Dojo. That's going to be really uh, central to the Pro-Am experience uh, and just like helping you get ready for it. And yeah, look for more details on Pro-Ams coming soon, TM. Oh, jeez.